book of Matthew, Matthew in chapter uh, 15. Thank you, Brother Taylor, for the privilege to stand up here this morning. I'm sure, uh, sure the other preachers understand what I mean. I am nervous as all get out, as uh, my generation would say growing up. I don't know what all get out means, but I'm that nervous, so I have no idea. Brother Perkins, I've heard you say it before. I sure do hate standing up here and not seeing my wife out in the crowd. She always calms my nerves. and She texted me this morning saying that she was praying for me, so that definitely helps. Thank the Lord for a good wife. Amen. Anyways, if you would, please stand in honor and uh, re read, stand in, and as we read and honor the Word of God. In Matthew in chapter 15, Lord being our helper, he's going to calm our nerves and we'll be able to talk straight and and read. But Matthew chapter 15, just three verses this morning. Begin reading in verse uh, 29. The Bible says, And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame and blind and dumb. I guess he had some Rogers family with him because that sounds like my family. Lame, blind, and dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. Can't find no better place to be. Cast them down at Jesus' feet and healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak and the maimed be, uh, be whole and lame to walk and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Let's pray. Father. Oh, Lord, I thank you so much for the privilege that I have, Lord, to stand here this morning. God, I thank you for the privilege to come to your house freely this morning, Lord, to gather together corporately to worship you or to lift you up in song. God, thank you so much for what you've already done in this meeting, Lord, the messages that we heard last night. Thank you, Lord, for the time that's gone in in preparation for this meeting, the prayers. God, thank you so much, Lord, for how you've used this meeting in my life, Lord, encouragement throughout the years. God, I pray right now you'd bless these next few minutes. God, help your servant. Lord, I want to preach. God, you've put a desire to preach in me, Lord, but I don't want to be up here unless you're going to help me. God, I pray that you would be with those that are listening. Help us to receive what you have for us this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Right here, just for a few minutes, I want to give you just a quick, by way of introduction, a quick background as, as to where we're at and what's going on. I know you're very familiar with, with at, at least uh, the Gospels this morning, but quickly, in the previous chapter, in, in uh, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 14, we see that, that Christ has just heard of the beheading, of the murder of John the Baptist. And uh, the Bible says in verse 13 that he departed thence by a ship into a desert place apart. We understand this morning that Jesus Christ was 100% God, that uh, he, he was deity. I mean, he was the God man. But I also realized this morning that he was 100% man, and he was affected just like we are. We know that he was tempted just like we were, but yet without sin. And I know that the cares of this world still weighed heavy on him, being 100% man. I understand that he was grieving in this passage. That he, uh, The rest of the passage tells us in this event, in the middle of, of, this, of this event with his own problems, that he still sees a multitude. And even though he's got his own issues, and he looks out to the crowd and still has compassion. So I see in, in chapter 14, just by way of introduction, that he's grieving in verses 1 through 13. I see him still giving in verses 13 through 22. He's going still in 23 through 32. And then I see that he's glorified in verse 33. And then, and then even amid all of that, he's worked all day. He's worked all night. He is up all night in prayer. People are constantly coming to him. You would say he's got to be tired, and I know that he was tired. But even after all of that... Chapter 14 ends with verses 34 through 36 with he gives more grace. He's got more grace for him. He's got his own problems. I mean, his, his own cousin has been beheaded. His, 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 his forerunner, the one who came, said, I'm not even worthy to unlatch his, his shoes. He, the one who told the ones, this is the Son of God. He's come to take away the sins of the world. This man is gone. Now, I know it's affected our Lord. It, it has affected him. But he still has more grace for those around him that he's ministering unto. And then right here, once again, uh, in chapter 15, just to give you an overview of, of, of where we're at in, in our verses this morning. In verse 29, we see that Christ departs. So he departed from thence. Where is he departing from? He's, he's departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and he's by the Sea of Galilee. I see in verse 30 the crowd's desperation. 
In verse 30 as well, the life-changing deliverance. These who are, are sick, they're maimed, the, the, the dumb, the deaf, the blind. They're desperate, but then they, they receive deliverance. And then in verse 31, the proper display of gratitude. They glorified the God of Israel. It doesn't matter how big or how small, I want my life to say that I've glorified the God of Israel. I've glorified my Lord. But this morning, just a simple thought, and then I'll sit down. I'm looking forward to what the Lord has for us this morning. Just a simple thought of some things you can find at my Lord's feet. On just somebody get me to His feet. I know this, I, I've heard so much preaching on this growing up. You've probably heard that title before, but I want to be fresh for us this morning. If God will just be our helper for the next few minutes. First off, uh, I'll give you the introduction from 29 to 31, so if you'll let me, let's work our way back. Let's go to verse 31. First off, the first thing I see here is I see some happiness at my Lord's feet. I see happiness at His feet. We see that, well, what's this happiness coming from? Where's, where's it coming out of? Well, first off, I see happiness because somebody loved these people enough to get them to his feet. Oh, that should make us happy this morning. That somebody loved us enough to pray for us, to, to my parents to, to faithfully get us up every time that the church doors were open and get us to the house of God. Somebody who loved me enough just to throw me at his feet every day of my life. They loved me enough to take, him, take me to his feet because someone led them. Happiness at his feet because someone led them. They couldn't get there on their own. These, these main people, these lame people, they had to rely on somebody else to physically carry the Word of God to them, or rather carry them to the Word of God. So, so because someone led them. But thirdly, also because they didn't leave like they came. Happiness at His feet because they didn't leave the same way they showed up to church that night. They didn't leave the same way after they had their interaction with Jesus. It absolutely changed their life. I want to run through a, for, through a few of these and get to our main thought. Happiness at his feet. I see healing at his feet. The lame can walk. The lame can walk. Brother Ricky Gravely said that the lame can walk. You see, they've gotten their stability back. I'm glad that in an ever-changing world, I serve an ever-changing God who can give me stability and show me through his word how to navigate what is going on in this messed up world. The lame can walk. The blind can see. How's your sight this morning? We don't need to lose focus on the main thing. What we're, what we're called to do. The dumb can talk. How's your speech? Does it glorify God? See, the dumb can talk. The maimed, are, they're made whole. And the Bible says right here in, in verse 31 that, that many others, they found the same. And he healed many others. I know I see healing at his feet. I see hope at his feet. There's hope for the sin, sick sinner at Jesus' feet this morning. I don't care how, how far off in sin you've gotten. It doesn't matter how long you've been there. If you have heard the Word of God and something on the inside of you says that's right, you've got to get there. You can find help at Jesus' feet this morning. But not only help for the sin sick sinner, help, for the, help for, the, uh, for the struggling saint this morning. That's where I'm at. I've gotten help as a sin sick sinner. And I know I'm still in this sin nature and I'm, I'm still wrapped in this flesh. But this morning, that when life just seems a little overwhelming and it seems like I'm just struggling and struggling and struggling, I know exactly where I can go to get some help. I can get help at His feet. I, and then, once again, I want to give credit where, 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 where it's due. But then Ricky Gravely, I, just, I love the way he worded this, and I'm, I'm just going to say it exactly like he did. It's not original with me, but I, I, I love this. He said there's humility at His feet. Humility at his feet. He treated them all the same. He talked to them all the same. And he touched them all the same. He didn't treat the ones who were on this side of the tracks different than he treated the ones who were on the other side. He didn't treat the ones who had been to prison different than the ones who have got a clean record their whole life. He treats them all the same. But then in verse 29, the Bible says, And in Jesus departed thence, came now into the Sea of Galilee. This morning... I see hiding at his feet. There's hiding. Once again, I don't, I don't mean to just put the emphasis on the storms that we go through, but that, that's where we're at this morning. The world that we live in, they are constantly rambling against us. They absolutely hate what is going on in here this morning. They hate the fact that my mom and dad, I, I mean, you've heard the saying, nine months before I was born had me in church. They say that I'm brainwashed this morning. That I've, I can't think for myself. They say that I've been indoctrinated and I have no other way of looking at things. They absolutely hate what is going on here this morning. And sometimes I've just got to get away. I need to find some hiding at His feet. 
Bible says in Psalm 91, verse 1, most of y'all can quote it, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Abide. That abide means to stay in place until otherwise directed. I'm glad that there's times in my life where He picks me up and says, I, I, I know it's rough, I know what you're going through, but you're going to abide right here. I'm going to strengthen you back up and we can keep going. Psalm 61, 1, or 1 and 2, Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. There's some places that I can't get to myself, but I'm glad that he loves me enough to lead me there. And he won't leave, he, and he won't leave me where I'm at. There's hiding at his feet. All of that, by way of introduction, and, and, and just those three verses, I want to give you this thought, and then I'm going to sit down. I want to go through just a few scenes I see in the New Testament at Jesus' feet. First off, I think of Luke in chapter 2, when some shepherds, lowly shepherds, got the announcement that the king has been born. That you've got to, you've got, you've got to go, go find him. I see in Luke chapter 2, there's some shepherds at his feet. Also in Luke chapter 2, I see, I see Simeon, who's been given a promise that you're going to see the Son of God. You're going to see Him. You're going to hold Him. You won't die until that happens. He's been, he's been given a promise. I see Simeon at his feet. I can't help but imagine that as the days go on, Simeon's been given this promise. He sees, he's been told that his eyes wouldn't see death. They're not going to close in death until he sees the promised one. And I can't help but imagine, uh, Brother Taylor, that as his steps got shorter, and he starts making that same walk to that temple. He says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting older, but I've been given a promise. And as the steps get a little bit shorter, as, as, as walking up those steps in the temple gets a little bit harder, just any day now, I know I'm going to get to see him. Just any day now, he's going to be coming. Just any day now, I'm going to get to behold him. I'm going to get to handle him with my own hands. And I can't help but think that we've been given a promise this morning. And I know that as this world gets darker, and as it gets more wicked, I can't help but think, Brother Taylor, just any day now, I'm going to get to see him. Just any day now, my eyes are going to get to behold him. Just any day now, my hands are going to get to handle him. Just any day now, because I have been given a promise. I'm going to get to see him. Matthew chapter 2, we can fast forward some two years. We see wise men who've made their way to his feet. You can go back to Luke in chapter 2. We see him at 12 years old answering and asking questions in the temple. And I can't help but think in my mind's eye, they've gathered around him. They're amazed and they're astonished. And then in Luke chapter 2 as well, Jesus increases in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And then it kind of goes silent for a while. And all we know that is Mark chapter 6 verse 3 says that when the Pharisees heard of him, they said, is this not the carpenter? Is this not the carpenter? And I just want to maybe put a quick time out right here, and this is to me. I'm still, I, I, I know I'm still a, a young man. I'm about to be 30. My back doesn't feel like I'm a young man, but I can't complain to you all about that this morning. You're going to throw something at me. But they said, is this not the carpenter? So young preacher this morning, can I tell you that even the Lord Jesus learned to trade and had a job before he went into full-time ministry? I don't know where that fits, but I'm just going to put that out there. But there's so much more that we could mention this morning about different scenes at Jesus' feet. Think of all the miracles. Maybe your favorite one that comes to your mind. Let me just give you a few. Luke chapter 7, there's an unnamed woman who breaks an alabaster box. And they say, oh, if Jesus knew the kind of woman she was, he wouldn't let this go on. I'm glad he knows the kind of man that I am. And he still lets me come down to his feet. Still wants me to break the alabaster box. Still wants me to, to weep and cry and just thank him for how good he has been to me in spite of myself. I think of Luke in chapter 17, we can mention the one leper who comes back and thanks the Lord and falls on his face at Jesus' feet. If you go to John 18, when now have those who have falsely accused him, they stand before him. The Bible says they fall down. They fall backwards. They're at his feet. Once again, John 19, those who have gathered at the foot of the cross, they're at the feet of Jesus. Oh, what a sight. 
And I know in prayer we can, we can imagine and, 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 and no doubt when you think of, of your salvation, think about that day, you have made your way to the foot of the cross. You have recognized the suffering Savior who has, been, who has taken your place and has died in your stead. John chapter 20, we see Mary Magdalene sees Him risen. And I can't help but think when He says Mary, that her first inclination was to fall down at his feet and just touch his feet. I don't know if that's how it happened, but oh, he, there, there she stands at the feet of Jesus. And then in Acts chapter 1, we're very familiar with it, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. We see those men gathered around his feet as he ascends back into heaven. And then once again, it might seem like it's, it's kind of going quiet for a while. And I know that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And I know that, that he lives on the inside of me this morning. But I cannot wait until the day where I get to see him. Where I get to physically handle him and touch him. So in my Bible, and, and there's no way we could cover all of them this morning. But let me give this last one and I'll sit down. That's not the last time in my Bible I read about somebody at the feet of Jesus. Because I can go to Revelation in chapter 4, in verse 10, which is a day I believe is very close approaching. The redeemed get to cast our crowns at Jesus' feet this morning. And we get to say, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Look, I have no idea what you're going through this morning. I have no idea where you're at. I, I, I know that we all live in this same sin-cursed world. I know we all have got a lot of the same problems. But I don't have the answer for you this morning. I don't. I don't have the answer for most of my problems this morning. But I know who does. And I know where you can go to find the answer. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, that needs to be you. That needs to be me this morning. Shall abide under the shadow of the, Almighty, of the Almighty. I don't know what you need this morning, but you can find it at Jesus' feet. Pastor.